Thank you for coming to the Chinese Cultural Center, the opening ceremony for the 600th anniversary exhibition of Amaro Shanghi's Voyages to the Western Sea. Today, we are here to celebrate not only the opening of the exhibition, but we are also here to celebrate a hero who has established diplomatic uh, relations between China and the other side of the world some 600 years ago. The voyages of uh, Chen Yi has been very important to our Chinese history. It represented a great advance in the evolution of human civilization and was instrumental in forging link, uh, new links between China and the rest of the world. I would like to introduce uh, some of our guest speakers today. First of all, Dr. Hmm. Ming Tengshu, Chairman and President of Chinese Cultural Center. <laughs> Council General from the Council General of People's Republic of China in Toronto. Mark <laughs> Ward 37, Scarborough Center. People's, People's Republic of China in Toronto. From Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome everybody to this official opening of the Zheng Hao exhibition in memory of one of the greatest navigators in the world. Zheng Hao was uh, Zheng He. Zheng He was appointed by Emperor Yongle uh, to sail to the countries beyond the horizon, all the way to the end of the earth. As you can see, in those days, we still think the earth is square rather than round. Uh, the run, so there's going to be an edge of the earth. Zheng was a brave soldier. He fought on behalf of Prince Zhu Di. As uh, some of you know the history, Zhu Di was uh, a prince of uh, then um, Emperor Zhu Yuanzhang. So um, when he uh, was still a prince, he stationed in Yunnan province, south of south or west of uh, China. Uh, you know, Ming Dynasty took over the Yuan Dynasty. But there were still leftover pockets of lands. They were still occupied by the Yuan people. I believe, I believe Zheng Hao was actually a, a soldier of the Yuan uh, dynasty. But uh, he got captivated uh, by the, uh, the Ming dynasty and became a, um, a, a, a captivated uh, person uh, to go to Ming dynasty. But uh, Zhu Di, who was the prince at the time, uh, stationed in Yunnan, uh, he was uh, very fond of this young man and took him in as uh, his officer. From then on, eventually, Zhu Di became the emperor of uh, uh, Ming Dynasty. So, of course, uh, this, uh, uh, Mr. Zhang also became a very high-ranking official in his ministry. So, since uh, afterwards, and uh, uh, Zhu Di, uh, the emperor, also uh, decided to uh, explore um, countries outside of its own country, which is we call Middle Kingdom. We call, in old times, China is the, um, the center of the universe. Everything else is uh, barbarian. So, so he actually uh, wanted to know what's happening outside of China, and particularly offshore. So he uh, uh, assigned um, Zhang as the admiral, admiral of the Western um, uh, Seas. So from then on, they start to build ships. Eventually, they had uh, uh, seven voyages um, uh, Zheng Hao took. Uh, seven times he, he went out uh, to China, to, to the South Seas, to uh, go as far as uh, uh, East Africa, that's the farthest, as, we, as far as we know. Of course, he went to uh, uh, South Asian countries, India, Arabian countries, and eventually to the uh, East Africa. So throughout all uh, this mission, the uh, um, the reason for the mission was uh, to bring well wishes from the emperor to the other countries. Um, they, um, when they, uh, when he went out, he uh, brought with him a lot of uh, uh, gifts uh, given to the uh, countries, uh, kings of different countries. So those gifts include Ming and uh, Ming white and blue porcelains, as you can see some of the replicas in the display case here. And also, uh, he brought silver, gold and silver to distribute to the kings of all the countries he visited. When he came back, he also brought back all the uh, local products, such as herbs, dyes, spices, uh, pearls, pearls, ivory, and exotic animals. That was one, uh, two of the most um, uh, 
significant animals were giraffe and the zebra. As you know, China uh, did not have that kind of animals, so it created a lot of interest in, in the uh, Chinese emperor at the time. So that kind of expeditions were uh, an important source of information about foreign countries at the time. Uh, thus, the voyages accomplished its goal of cultural, religious, as well as the uh, trade exchange, and also promote Sino-foreign relations. But we would like to take this opportunity to remember Zhang Hao as the national hero, who was a soldier, an admiral, and a diplomat. We hope more people uh, all over the world will have uh, more uh, uh, knowledge about the general's accomplishment. Uh, actually, uh, his um, uh, contribution uh, uh, signifies that the China uh, had the, um, the, 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 the technologies for building ships and also the technologies for navigation. So actually, all this happened uh, 80 years before Christopher Columbus went to his uh, uh, trip. So actually, China was far, in, uh, far advanced in the uh, Western, uh, Western countries in terms of navigation and uh, shipbuilding. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, the Honorable Mike Cole, Minister of uh, Immigration and Citizenship, for establishing a $10,000 scholarship uh, to encourage young Canadians to explore and learn more about history of Ten Hag. I'd like to give a big hand. Uh, Toronto is only the second city to host this event, uh, the first one being Ottawa. So we are quite lucky uh, in the CCC to have this uh, big uh, exhibition in our uh, uh, centre. And, uh, I wish you a, uh, a very, uh, very present day. Thank you. 今天非常高兴我们传递在这里纪念郑和夏西洋就是他这个六百周年的庆祝。Ladies and gentlemen, today we gather here in the Great Culture Center to celebrate or say to commemorate the great navigator Zheng He's marriage, the world war. In commemoration of 600 years of marriage, before this point, a lot of friends told me that because of the exhibition, they began to know something in the history of China. They start to know who Zheng He was. But for the Chinese, for the old people and for young people in the history book, in the past or present days, Zheng He is a great, great diplomat, a great navigator, also, as Ming Ta Zhang mentioned, he was a great fighter also. When we mentioned that 600 years ago, the skill of navigator the world over was quite low. But China at that time, when we start to build those quite advanced ships. And then Zheng He led a team almost uh, seven times. He went seven, seven times uh, to uh, more than 30 countries the world over. That was a very, very long way. Just think that if without those navigator skill, and who else can travel that long, long ocean, just from the east to the west? The places he went to, African, and also quite uh, very, very um, Latin American, say the Asian countries. I was working in Malaysia before, you know, in the ocean there, we see the steps, we see some of the things still in commemoration of Zheng He. He left the people the world over a very, very important impression, that is peace China bring to the world. Zheng He, he was a great navigator, that means that he was at that time, you know, was really, really brave and full of courage. Then he was a great diplomat, a great ambassador. We like to mention that because all the places he went to, he shared seeds of friendship. I had a very different impression that when I was in Malaysia, Madoka, Maliuja, Hai, Xianali, I visited many, many times the, uh, the place. Yeah. When people talk a lot about him, they have places in commemoration of him, status and exhibitions there. And people chatted to me that, at that time, I said, Zheng He did not 
you know, he did not seize any、uh, inch of land of the foreign country. 也就是说，郑和在那个时候，不管他到什么地方去，都是播种了、播种下来友谊的种子。所以我们讲，他不光是伟大的航海家，也是伟大的外交家、伟大的和平使者。Today, when we gather here, not only for the commemoration or not only for the opening of the exhibition, I think more important is that we look back at history. We have to treasure today. What we are enjoying, what we are owning, and we have to work for tomorrow, for the future. China is a peace-loving country. China now is a very, very.、Um, we would say that people look at China in many, many aspects: the culture, the economic development, many, many other ways. But as Chinese people, as also, I think I would also like to speak a word: the,、uh, the overseas Chinese. They are living overseas. No matter, you know, they are overseas or at back in China. We all this proud that the history which we feel proud of. But we have to work together with the world people all over. We, especially here, here in Toronto, in Canada, we will be working together with Canadian people, with the federal government, for a peaceful cooperation, for a wonderful future together. That is what we are looking for. And、allow me to say a few words in Chinese. And, and 各位朋友，今天我们在这里不光是就是这个开幕仪式。刚才我用英文讲，更重要的是，我们从过去的历史，郑和下西洋就留六六百年前这段历史，我们更加要珍惜今天的和平。今天我们所拥有的一切，我们也要到明天我们的发展，就是说。如何去把中国这个和平发展，就中国的友谊，更多更多的传承在海外。海外的朋友如何发扬中华民族这种光荣的传统？如何把中华民族的优秀的品质在海外呢？就是更加的发扬光大，是我们今天所，我想大家所要记住的。今天我非常高兴看到很多朋友，老人家、孩子们都过来。啊，老先生，谢谢你，你八十八岁的高龄了，还专门这个远程赶来看这个展览。啊，刚才老先生跟我讲，他一定要来，因为郑和是他心目中的英雄。我想，郑和不光是我们每一个人心目中，是我们每个中华民族心心目中的英雄。所以今天啊，我们中华这这中国呃，就多伦多总领事馆，我们非常非常高兴能有这个机会啊，把这个展览呢、啊、放到这里来展出。这也是我们对和平热爱，对我们就是过去历史的珍惜，对明天的向往的一份象征。And I like to say just a few words before ending. It was not easy for us to get the,、uh, the exhibition here. You know, actually, this picture, this exhibition started last year in uh, uh, in Malaysia, uh, because that.、Uh, Two thousand and five was the six hundred years anniversary of the six hundred voltage history. Then this exhibition went the world over. You know, more than two hundred countries. We have to order. We have to grasp the chance. We have to say, oh, please let us have this exhibition. So me, you know, and also Mr. Chen Shuang, the cultural council, we will have tried very, very hard. Especially Mr. Chen Shuang, like to、uh, the commercial capital. Talk to the Ministry of Culture. We have to, you know, arrange those、uh, shipping, those things. But anyway, we are happy to have the exhibition here. We also thank the,、uh, the Chinese Cultural Center、uh, for this wonderful cooperation and、uh, for today's event happening. Then, ah,、uh, 非常感谢大家。我想今天的聚会让我们看到了。我们和平的中国，我们中国的这有一个历史上有个这么伟大的航海家、外交家，我们的使节。谢谢大家，希望大家对中国的历史更加了解，好，更多人来参观。谢谢。Uh, to this official opening, I bring greetings from my colleagues in the Greater Toronto Federal Liberal Caucus, and also from all of the other members of、uh, the House of Commons from the Toronto area.、Um, Uh, this particular exhibition is one of the things that the CCC was designed perfectly for, and I hope I hope that the invitation goes to local schools that will allow school children 
uh, if they can read, uh, to come and view this because this, this particular initiative will assist in setting aside what songwriter Paul Simon called the myth of the fingerprint. The myth is that we're all different. Each of us is different. It's a myth because if you look back at our human civilizations, we have so much in common. And it is worth noting that uh, Zhang He, one of the motivations of his travel was to visit Mecca, the home of Islam. And uh, as uh, Ming Tat Chung pointed out, the Chinese were fairly insular then. They didn't actually the world, try and conquer the world. The voyages were actually friendship and diplomatic. And it is not inconceivable that during those voyages, the navigational, scientific, and mathematic skills used in navigation and developed partly in China could have been conveyed to, into the Persian world the world of Islam. And we all know that the world of Islam informed the Western cultures uh, through Spain uh, in the 1400s, the 1300s, uh, informed the Western cultures. And who were the next great navigators after Zheng He? Well, we had the Portuguese and the Spanish and the French and the British. Uh, but who's to say that the navigational skills of Zheng He and the math and the science were not part of that package of skills that actually allowed the Western world to develop. So there's a huge interest in this, and uh, I haven't had a chance to read it all, but hopefully I will. But thank you very much for inviting me, and uh, I wish great success to the CCC and this exhibition. I haven't quite got used to the magnificence of these new surroundings, so once again, it's, it's great to be in these terrific uh, new facilities, and uh, to be here for Mr. Jack Hood. Now, since we are among friends, I will make a true confession. Even though my wife is Chinese, even though I've been to China many times, before today my knowledge of the detail of Zheng He's role in Chinese history and his great feats as a diplomat and a navigator, my knowledge of all this was, shall we say, limited. <laughs> And for me that's very important because one of the functions, I think, of the CCC is to educate people, to educate Chinese people about their history and uh, to remind the older ones, educate the younger ones, but also to educate people like me so that we don't live in solitude, so that we come to understand and appreciate each other's history and culture and foundations. So to me, that's a very important part of this and I really congratulate Mike Cole. Uh, for, for promoting this with his uh, uh, scholarship, and I'm delighted to be here with you today. I'd like to end just with a quick remark to the Consul General to respond to a comment she made, partly because we have been good friends, and sadly she won't be in Canada that long, much longer. And I just want to say I agree with you totally, that, uh, and I know our new leader, Stéphane Dion, does too, that we must work to promote friendship with China, to build on our strategic partnership and to promote deeper and stronger relations in trade and investment and culture and friendship. And you can be assured that this is the uh, task uh, to which we will be dedicated. Thank you all very much. Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, thank you for your Hello. Hello. I want to say gongshi to the Chinese Cultural Center. Uh, Dr. Zhang and uh, all the staff, Vita Chan, everyone that's uh, made this a, a true dream come true. And I think being here today uh, with uh, Zhang Po uh, is uh, part of what is so wonderful and special about the Chinese Cultural Center. Uh, and as some of you know, I mentioned it before, I used to be a history teacher. So I know just a little bit more than uh, my colleague, John McCallum. <laughs> because I remember uh, I used to teach grade 12 world history. And uh, the curriculum in Ontario was made, world history is really European history. That's what it was. So I remember I had great consternation one year when I changed the curriculum. I, I was lucky I was at a, a very special school, St. Michael's. So what I did is I said, we're no longer teaching European history, we're teaching 
Asian history, Chinese history, and we're going to teach uh, South American and Central American history. Well, it was just so difficult. Well, how can you do this? How can you do this? Well, I said there's probably more history. Uh, the Canadian history you could put in a teacup. <laughs> Chinese history you could put in an ocean. <laughs> so I said that's why we have to, as Canadians, start to understand uh, the incredible contributions that uh, Zheng He and so many other incredible uh, Chinese intellectuals, ambassadors, uh, scientists gave to the whole world. And this goes back, you know, to uh, 3500, you know, BC. 3500 years before the birth of Christ. That so many incredible things, you know, if you study the history of the Silk Road, and uh, again, it goes back. It's just, uh, it's so exciting. And that's why in uh, talking uh, to the Chinese Cultural Center, I thought it was very important to let our young people know this. And not only uh, young people that are uh, uh, the traditional uh, Canadian that uh, don't have any relation to China, but all young people know about the importance of these great explorers and these ancient uh, contributors like Zheng He. We have to pass that on to them so they can appreciate that the world is just not here. This is one piece of a world. And Zheng He was so important because he and the Ming Dynasty leadership reached out to the world, sharing what China had and also bringing back from Mecca or from India, from Japan, from Malaysia, bringing that back to China. It's a two-way building of harmony, understanding. So that legacy of Zheng He is a legacy we should pay attention to today. And as John McCallum just said, it is critically important more than ever that we as Canadians and Ontarians build bridges with the whole world and especially with China. The bridges built on education, on cultural exchanges, on economic and trade exchanges, in the spirit of Zheng He. That was his spirit. So that's how you build about peace in the world, by better understanding and better appreciation and respect. And that is why with the scholarship the um, Ontario government is putting forward is a small step in ensuring that our young people start to take time to appreciate and listen to their elders about the contributions made by their <coughs> grandfathers, their great grandfathers, and where they came from. And so today we are really here uh, to say thank you uh, to all that made this possible. Madam uh, Jim Zhao Ling and uh, the whole staff, the, uh, the consulate here in Toronto, uh, the Chinese Cultural Center, and all the volunteers. Uh, you have made us richer by bringing uh, Zheng He's uh, uh, 600 year anniversary uh, exhibition here right to the heart of uh, Canada and the heart of Ontario. So I am uh, very excited about this because I think this will be the beginning of many, many more uh, cultural exchanges that are critically important uh, in building a better world and a better Canada. But this is exactly uh, why Canada is in many ways a model for the world. And this is an opportunity to make these in a better model. And uh, I just, uh, again, I, uh, the last thing I, I mentioned the other day is, you know, that uh, the last little history lesson, excuse me, Derek, I'm just going to mention this thing. This is the comparison, okay, and this is a comparison we should all say. We all know about Christopher Columbus. His fleets were several dozen times larger than those of Columbus. A dozen times larger. Uh, the ship's loading capacities and the range of the voyages were almost also much greater than those of the later European explorers. Each of uh, Zhang's Western voyages launched a fleet of a consisting of over 200 ships. Among these were more than 60 mid-sized ships, large and gigantic treasure ships. His largest ship was 45 Zhang, which is about 140 meters. That's almost the size of two football fields. Can you imagine that ship, where the ships that Columbus sailed in were smaller than this room? 140 meter ships, the treasure ships. 
with four decks, you know, four mats. I mean, it was incredible, the scope and size of this, way before, uh, you know, the, the Western explorers. Um, again, I, I just want to say that that puts it a bit in perspective of how far ahead Chinese science and technology and innovation was to the so-called glorious West. Uh, that so my underlying lesson is that by appreciating Zhenghe, we appreciate how much we have to gain by understanding people from all the world and their civilizations and what they bring to us, and that's how we really can build a better society and a better world. So I just want to say again to all of you here, you are part of uh, sending that very strong message of cooperation, and I say Shei Shei, Dong Zhei, and Dong Shi. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Chang uh, and uh, Madam Chang for inviting me and uh, distinguished guests. Uh, my uh, Minister of uh, Culture, Ms. Kali, is a history teacher and I happened to be a student at one time and uh, fortunately enough for me, uh, I uh, was born in Malaysia of overseas uh, Chinese descent. And I remember studying a little bit, but uh, at that time we were taught that he's Emerald Ching Ho. Okay, I don't remember, you know, like, uh, so I did, when I got the invitation that uh, Yang Di, I was looking and I said, who is this person? So when I researched it, I found that, uh, you know, what I knew him to be uh, Emerald Ching Ho. And uh, I, this is one of the names that I remember very uh, strongly because uh, although history wasn't my favorite subject or subject I was good at, but uh, Emma Ching Ho stuck in my mind because of his uh, excellent uh, exploration skills and uh, he's uh, been a great sailor that sailed around the oceans. In, uh, and he did a uh, great uh, work in terms of exploring and going to the Far East and bringing back to China a lot of uh, you know, uh, trade and exchanges. So, you know, I'm also very glad that uh, when Madam Cheng uh, said that uh, the exhibition started in Malaysia, and that's why I was born in Malaysia. So I don't, uh, my Chinese is not very good, so I'm going to, you're going to excuse me if I speak in English. Uh, but, you know, so it's an honor that uh, it's mentioned that Malaysia was where this exhibition started, and uh, now it's the second, uh, you know, display here in Canada. And uh, it's a great honor to be here to, uh, look at all these exhibits and to learn a little bit more about uh, Emma Ching Ho's voyages and how he uh, you know, brought the rest of uh, China to, uh, to the world as well as the rest of the world to China. And this is what uh, this world is about now, uh, trade and uh, economy improving uh, life for all of us. So I hope that uh, everybody will learn more about uh, Emma Ching Ho's uh, voyages and also try to emulate his uh, examples. So I thank you every, every, uh, everyone for inviting me and uh, enjoy the exhibition and every success in your exhibition. Thank you. It is my delight to be here uh, today to speak with you. I must say that upon entering the room, I didn't know much about Mr. Hope. <laughs> um, however, I am absolutely delighted that there is uh, such an exhibit to celebrate 600 years. And in fact, I was just thinking when uh, Minister Cole and others, uh, Derek Lee and my colleague uh, Jin Lee, uh, was speaking that the element of peace with respect to commerce and trade, and given the, the, the element that the large ships that Minister Cole spoke of, it, it presumes that there was a tremendous amount of technology that had been utilized as well as uh, knowledge. So I would imagine that there was a great opportunity for an explorer to be able to take advantage of new foreign lands because of the technologies and the opportunities in which they would have to take control. Yet, that wasn't the case. The journey was about peace. The journey was about friendship. Not dissimilar to the metaphor that we see in this room here. We see the wonderful light of the city of Toronto. We see the, 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 the sunlight coming into this room and really highlighting this exhibit, which tells us that the social capital that we are seeing today and the rewards provides great opportunities for us all to learn in the spirit, in the fabric, the nature of human culture. 
so that we can learn from one another. As someone of African descent, I was amazed in terms of looking at uh, the, the, the information here where there was activities with China and Africa many, many years ago and trading and so on in peace. And what we learned, um, as you know about the mercantilism system that the British system offered, which is one of divide, conquer, and to, to, to take from without respect. And I think this is really something that I've always admired about the Chinese culture and the Chinese community. And others me, we've always had a great friendship and we've always had a great sense of respect. Today, in our world, that particular respect exuberates from China to Canada because we know with respect comes a sense of understanding. With understanding, there's opportunity of trade. And what we learn from the history of the exhibit here today, that there has been um, a precedent setting so that when we hear about history in, uh, in, in economics, as, a, as an economic student, uh, you learn about the Industrial Revolution. Well, we think that as being a big deal. Well, if you compare the Industrial Revolution to what we're hearing here and learning here today, there were great revolutions that have taken place with respect to a Chinese content to it. And I think we have much to learn from the culture as well as what we hear and see here today. And as someone who has woken up this morning learning something new, I can tell you that it makes me a better person. And in fact, I am delighted to be amongst you today in order to celebrate this tremendous exhibit. Minister Cole puts it best when he says, as a history teacher, there are students who will benefit from the legacy of understanding, from the cultural uh, bond that we see here today. Because let, it be no, let there be no doubt, the outstanding legacy that we see here today, all can benefit and you can learn from. So that the Chinese community in Toronto, in, in, in Ontario, and in Canada, you have so much to be proud of. And we all have so much to learn from you. And I'm happy that we're all blessed to be able to share and stay in this wonderful room with a great metaphor of the sunlight hitting the room with the warmth, with the sense of explosion, and because they're a great opportunity for us to be able to go forward as a community and as a very different cultures all coming together. Because of the pairs that we have been able to do it in the past from the history that we recognize here. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to continue the legacy so that we can all have a greater city greater province and a greater country. God bless you all. Thank you. Honorable John McConnell, Minister Mike Cole, Mr. Chin Wee, and also Mr. Michael Thompson.